Vlad has a neat trick where um, he makes the estimate of the bet <coughs> um, be a total worker on the um, on the bets. So there's a there's a reflective thing going on, um, which is very cool. It's easy to level slip when you when you do something like that. Um, but uh, the nice thing about the that trick is that you don't have to reason much about the uh, you don't have to reason too much about the domain of estimates, um, which is uh, uh, um, it's 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 advantageous in a lot of ways because it it makes this statement of the correctness of the algorithm broad without having to worry too much about specializing it for different um, uh, consensus on different states. So let's see if I can unpack that and make all that make sense. Um, the, uh, the Casper algorithm um, uh, replicates state um, using a certain um, method of betting. And, this, and the, the question is, what kind of state can you replicate? Um, and Vlad has been focused uh, um, for the correctness proofs on on just um, getting consensus around a single bit, mm -hmm. um, but, but we've wanted to look at you know of course consensus on more complicated state. Um, and um, Vlad had the idea of um, having the um, consensus be on. The, an order on the bets that are used for consensus. <laughs> the order on the bets that are used for consensus, but so the re reflection, reflective. So they all have to, they all, ha they all come to an agreement on the order of the the bets that are being placed. Um, so yeah, it's it's extremely reflective and very tricky. Um, so the order of the bets are um, propositions. Does that mean the order of propositions or the? No, it means the order of the placement, the communication, the propositions. Oh, okay, got it. Um, and in fact, that's the other trick is that the um, propositions make that um, uh, much, much cleaner. So that was the other thing that we did uh, over the, uh, on Sunday, on the Sunday's working session was to um, shore up common understanding of how the prop what the propositions look like um vlad had a desire to make um uh, what we've been calling the fault context um um have a uh be propositions about propositions and i've been trying to talk him out of that because it adds a hell of a lot of complexity and there's a canonical way to flatten things so, so we were kind of getting on the same page about what logic was necessary in order to express uh, what we want to express. Uh, I think Brian still has some caution, but I've been able to make some headway with him about <laughs> reducing, reducing the total complexity. I, I do really like the reflective trick. I think it may also introduce complexity that we have to worry about a lot. Um, but it's a clever, it's very much, a, it's a very clever idea. Um, and that took us, you know, several hours to get through to the point where we could, um, you know, sort of state all that and get all that tightened, tightened up in, in a relatively formal language. Um, so, so that's kind of the, the biggest update. Um, I don't know if he'll be on, uh, Ed, or yeah, Ed, did you have any questions or comments or? Uh, so is uh, I don't know how to ask this broadly. Do you feel a sense of converging, or uh, I mean, yeah. like you're convincing uh, uh, Vlad of of, for example, what I read between the lines is the bet by proposition now argument is stronger. Um, than bet on whole blocks, uh, or maybe you made that. Maybe you made uh, convinced him of that uh, a while back. But it sounds like you're um, holding steadfast to the bet by proposition as opposed to whole blocks. And are you are you gaining traction with him? 
I'm not, yeah, I, I think that's. I think that's. It's. It's pretty clear that <coughs> the proposition. The proposition trick makes so many more things tractable. Yeah, and uh, and. <coughs> But how is Vitalik on that particular point? I don't know. I mean, I think Vitalik uh, doesn't really understand it. So okay, um, uh, th that's my that's my take on it. Um, going on. So the the other the other piece of the puzzle um, was that you know you can relax the um, you c you can relax the Vlad is was looking for a total order. Um, uh, for the set of bets, but there's no reason why. Actually, the definitions work whether the the order is total or partial. Um, so, so this works in the case of the rho VM as well, which is uh, you know because we're only interested in partial orders on transactions. We don't need total orders. Um, <coughs> and it turns out that you know there's nothing there's nothing specific to the definitions uh, that make it a, a, a total order anyway. Uh, so, um, so that, uh, that, that turns out to be quite nice. Um, and, you know, maybe it's a nice segue for um, some of the work that's going on with the Rovium. Uh, with, with the Rovium, I've been um, uh, largely working on the compiler, on the source to source compiler piece. So I've got um, uh, a zipper-based um, uh, compiler going on. Let's see if I can describe that. Ah, looks like uh, Misha has joined. Yeah, hi, hello. Hi, Misha. Hi, Misha. Yeah, guys. So, what are you working on? Uh, so, can you see me? Yes. So, uh, I'm working for Luke, which is the project uh, uh, for creating exchange uh -huh. based on based on uh, uh, on colored coins, actually. Uh -huh. So, so exchanging colored coins, and the uh, we also we we actually. Uh, trying to integrate Ethereum currently, mm. yeah, to build uh, uh, like a cross-chain swaps, atomic swaps, mm -hmm. to make, make it safe, and and also we are focused on 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 building micro payment channels to uh -huh. to scale scale up the transactions, mm. Mm. and so like off-chain settlement. Right, right, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's looking for some kind of way to to offload the work from the chain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, because yeah, there, there are, we we are actually trying to to attract uh, high frequency, you know, algo trading uh, robots in, in, to 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 our exchange. So to provide such a such speed and capacity, so we need um, and, and to 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 keep the same level of safety so we need to provide um something some, some solution like like off-chain yeah so well that, that, that's that's it, when in the case that the chain transaction rates are un, unreasonable or don't don't line up with it with with the, the high frequency trading requirements uh, yeah. yeah well if you if you have a if you have a different architecture for the chain then the chain starts to get up where um uh, uh, um, this, uh, when the chain starts to get upwards of forty or fifty thousand transactions per second, it's still not. Um, it, it may not be, you know, the best for you know really high frequency algorithmic trading, but it's starting to get closer to the ballpark. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that that's where our chain is headed, is uh, at that at those kind of transaction speeds, and that's what Ed and I were talking about uh, earlier. You you weren't on the call, but um, our approach to um, the consensus algorithm um, uses uh, allows us to completely sidestep the whole block size debate um, because we have a way of describing the blocks algorithmically. 
So you get massive amounts of compression. And because you get massive amounts of compression, you get um, uh, much, much higher throughput and much higher transaction rates. So, uh, so we should we should we should uh, we should talk about uh, uh, the, your your transaction requirements. Yeah, of course. That's there's hard work ahead, but that's where we're headed, and and with some with a lot of confidence. <laughs> yeah. Based on, um, have you have you had a chance, uh, Misha, to look at the Archain architecture document at all, or other input? Not, not quite. Not not. Oh, you'll find it. You'll find it fascinating. There's um, on on the website archain.coop. Uh, you can you can see the uh, architecture and uh, the the claims and and confidence. Uh, why we have confidence in those claims? Yeah. So. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so Misha, are you doing both um, token to token? Uh, uh, contracts and in, in, in exchange as well as to fiat to and from fiat so yeah yeah we 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 gonna gonna have uh, like a different types of trusted issues like probably even banks which uh, issue the fiat coins and uh, we provide uh, atomic swaps uh coins to any kind of coin to any kind of coin coin so currently we we provide such atomic swaps based on uh open asset protocol on on top of the bitcoin blockchain oh nice so uh, let me just uh, make sure I'm, so so banks are part of this marketplace is that what i understand that they so we're, would we're targeting this yeah oh you're targeting them as customers yeah yeah ah. as, as 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 an issuers yeah well, it, you said issuers of fiat coin. You mean oh, a, fiat coin, coins. A, right. a coin, a coin that uh, represents mu uh, uh, fiat, such as uh, yeah. tether, for example. So, similar. Such as, yeah, so, so, such as uh, any any fiat, you know, euro, dollars, some uh, any coins. But it, it you're saying that there would be a, a on blockchain token that represents that currency value. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it's a stable coin. Right. Yeah. That's stable take. coin. Yes, which which is guaranteed by an issuer. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then they would take the the swaps necessary to uh, in in positions necessary and and adjust the supply in order to keep it stable. Is that right? Mm, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, have you been following uh, MakerDAO's uh, stable coin objectives and and also Tether? Well, uh, well, actually, uh, those are the, those happen to be the only two I know with the objective of a stable coin. Yeah, um, actually, actually, another, another point is to provide um, any kind of assets, you know, and not not only fiat coins, but any kind of coins uh, which can be traded. Sure. Changed, yeah. So this is this is the point. That's awesome. Um, so what do you what do you expect your uh, uh, your um, transaction rates requirements to be? Well, uh, actually, for high frequency trading, it 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 required up to uh, one hundred thousand transactions per second. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was. Yeah, thinking. So yeah. we're yeah. Uh, so we're, we're we'll we'll get in the ballpark. Uh, maybe not maybe not uh, first version, but. Uh, by v1.1 we can probably be in that ball ballpark so greg someone asked a question when when uh, reading the uh, architecture document as well as the uh, pitch deck that i'm working on um how how are we confident in making those claims of you know 15000 a second to 40 you know to 40000 transactions a second how what are those um, claims based on uh uh, so how how can we um, demonstrate? Uh, so I understand the algorithmic side of you know bet by proposition and sharded blockchain, and so that a, a node doesn't have to carry the whole blockchain, etc. But 
Um, yeah, so the, the, limiting, the limiting factors here are what, what you use to do the calculations. The limiting factors are how, how often you have to invoke the consensus, how many, how many validators are involved in the consensus, and how long, how long does the, um, how long does the uh, uh, consensus take to converge. All right, so those, those are your limiting factors, and those are what go into the calculations for the transaction rates. But maybe it would be a good idea to, um, uh, to publish those. And it would be a good idea to, so, kind of to do a, a write-up there. So, what, 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 so, I mean, currently, if you, if you look, um, every time you have to invoke Casper because you have some kind of conflict, Right. right. And just, uh, just for Misha's uh, benefit, uh, un unlike uh, uh, Bitcoin um, or, or some other even proof of stake proposals, the consensus protocol doesn't need to be invoked every time. It's only when there's a conflict. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> right. Exactly. And we have ways of detecting those conflicts. Right. We have we have a, a mechanism for seeing <laughs> um, when when there is a conflict. Um, <clears throat> and then on the basis of, uh, you know, when there's a conflict, then you have to run the betting protocol, right? And then you have to look at how long it, how, how quickly that converges, right? So th those are the factors um, that we have. And then um, you, can, you can take um, the numbers from um, Vitalik's uh, uh, POC and we'll be able to get easily two orders of magnitude better than that. Uh, and that's, that's a, the rough estimate for the kind of transaction rates we can see. Okay. No, that's, that's awesome. Um, that, that helps give me a lot of confidence. So just, I mean, obviously on all things, it's based on the shape of the data coming in so that, yeah, if, that of course, if, yeah, that's, that's another, that's another issue, but, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, so just, Again, for Misha's benefit, yeah. So if if uh, the transactions um, aren't in conflict and and if they are um, relatively uh, relatively isolated in terms of uh, either, well, let's say they're all in the namespace and the namespace is, has a, a set of nodes that are really well connected with each other and there's not a lot of conflicts, then then it's. Uh, you know, approaching the speed of the of, of the metal, unless there is is a conflict, <laughs> then you run and then you run these calcs. So yeah, it's, okay, Greg, that helps a lot. Um, me. Yeah, so, yeah. So so when there's no conflicts, then basically it's a tiny overhead over a messaging protocol. Right. 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 When there's conflicts, then you 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 have to put on the brakes and you have to have everyone agree. Right. It's, it's you know. How fast can you copy the data over? Or oh, we don't agree on this bit, so we got to go through some kind of merge protocol. <laughs> <coughs> no, that that helps me a lot. Um, yeah. uh, if 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 I get a question like that again, I'll have a much better answer than I did before. <laughs> yeah, sure, cool. I'm oh, glad glad to have that. Awesome. Well, I'm thinking we've given our updates. Misha, it's really nice to meet you. If you, uh, if you want to, um, uh, please feel free to join the uh, R Chain Hangout anytime you want. Um, uh, that's norm. Th this is the Casper stand up. The R Chain Community Hangout happens uh, on Wednesdays at uh, 11 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. We'd love to hear more about <coughs> your project and, and where you are and you know, why you made the technology choices that you made and so on. Yeah. Um, <coughs> cool. And Christian, thanks again, as, as always, for being on point every, every week, same time. I know that's a, that's a huge challenge. But thank, thank you. Thank you so much.